is on Generation X. How about this one? He also happens to be one of them. The 60 million 18 to 32 year olds in the United States who have come of age during a trust deficit. Young people never really experienced optimism. They grew up in a period of cynicism. When people are withdrawing, this becomes the norm for them. This becomes what they expect. Generation X has felt the wage crunch and the debt burden. Average income for people under 30 is $23,000. That's about 25% less adjusted for inflation than two decades ago. The average college graduate starts life jobless and almost $10,000 in the hole. The price of starting out economically strapped, 43% of 24 to 29 year olds live with their parents. 45% live paycheck to paycheck. It makes them wary of the future. I think that anyone who believes that Social Security will be there when they get older, who's my age, is stupid. Other signposts of mistrust, lessons learned young. For this generation, the statistics on divorce are nearly surreal. From 1965 to 1975, when most of them were children, the divorce rate doubled. It was a more intense experience, and what we find is that a lot of experts took on a lot of responsibility at an early age um, in an effort to, to cope with this situation. This generation bears the scars of cynicism, but is not paralyzed by those scars. Despite all that's working against them, both real and perceived, they are survivors. The vast majority remain doggedly optimistic about their abilities to adapt and to succeed. And how they do it is instructive. By the end of the day, I should really work on Leslie's copy. Stephen Grass started Gyro when he was 25. He is typical of his generation. Three out of five aspire to run their own business. Okay. I think people now say, yeah, okay, the world isn't perfect. Um, there's a lot of things that are wrong, but I'm going to make my own life better. You know, if we're going to show these things to these groups tonight... Grass believes that by running Gyro, he puts his future in his own hands. The company is, is profitable. And even some of these. So just There's a sense of security in, in it for me because uh, I can't be fired or laid off. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can always work harder. His ads laugh at other ads, play with convention, sneer at the establishment. Here he makes fun of a well-known Gap campaign. For Grass and his staff, it's a constant rush to create something different. There's so much media out there. It's soup. And in this soup, you have to stand out. How about something about genes? Gene theory. At work on his latest campaign, Grass is busting his brains to come up with a new ad, a fresh way to overcome the skepticism of a generation pelted by 300 commercial images every day. It's a new brand. It's called Reactor. To find out if his ads are cutting through, he gathers focus groups and he probes. Well, that's it. I'll, I'll tell you now. The jeans come in a can. These jeans would come in that can. <laughs> Unconventional ideas and eye-catching ads. I think this works because I don't think that we need to be spoon-fed exactly. in, in advertising. To stand out in a sea of information. You know, you walk down the street a couple blocks and there's so much stuff to see and to, you know, to take in. And With so much to absorb, they tend to tune out what doesn't seem relevant. I feel like there's not enough hours in the day for uh, about how busy I am. And that carries over into how they view politics. The politics, that's not my world. My world is, you know, Hyde Park, Chicago. That's, that's my world. Fewer than half vote. And among those who do, many don't even see the point. Yeah, I'm probably going to vote. Um, I think I'm going to write in other. <laughs> I don't know. But that doesn't mean they don't care. This generation does far more volunteer work, for example, than any other age group. Don't hold me responsible for the whole world. That's too big a problem for any one person to take on. But I can make things right where I live. CNN presents Democracy in America is brought to you by LCF.